an agnostic, ponders the existence of God. Thankfully, machine learning is not quite there yet. When we talk about an agnostic method, we mean one that can be used with any model. Hi, I'm Connor and welcome to ADO. In this video, we will elaborate on this definition. We will also discuss the different classifications of model agnostic methods for interpretability. These are global versus local interpretations and permutations versus surrogate models. We end by discussing the limitations of model agnostic methods and their benefits over other approaches to interpretability. Okay, before we start, a quick reminder that there are two broad categories of approaches in explainable AI. We can try to build models that are intrinsically interpretable. These are models like linear regression or decision trees. We can also use methods to interpret more complex black box models after they have been trained. This is where model agnostic methods come in. If you're interested in this type of content, then make sure to sign up to my newsletter in the description. You'll get free access to an explainable AI course where I give an introduction to XAI, teach you to build interpretable models, and go into depth on the theory and Python code for model agnostic methods, including LIME, SHAP, PDPs, ICE plots, ALEs, and Friedman's H statistic. Model agnostic methods treat all models, even intrinsically interpretable models, as a black box. They are applied to a model after it has been trained and they do not require that we look into their inner workings. This means that if we want to apply a method to a new model, we can simply swap the models out. Most evaluation metrics are model agnostic. Take accuracy, for example. For classification, accuracy is the percentage of instances that had a correct class prediction. To do this calculation, we need to compare the target class in the test data set to the predicted class. In other words, we only need the model predictions and not the model itself. Sure, some models may be more accurate than others, but the accuracy calculation will always be the same. In practice, it is actually not common to refer to evaluation metrics as model agnostic. The term is more for when we are talking about XAI methods. Many model agnostic methods have been developed and there are two key ways that we can group them. The first way we can classify model agnostic methods is by what they are trying to interpret. Global interpretations aim to understand how a model works as a whole. Some examples are the permutation feature importance, PDPs, ICE plots, ALEs, and Friedman's H statistic. These methods can identify the general trends that a model is using to make predictions. Take these ALEs. From this, we can get an idea of the type of relationship the features have with the target variable and the importance of that relationship. The predicted target variable tends to decrease as shuck weight increases. We can see this relationship is more important than the other two features. However, we cannot see how the features affect individual predictions. Local interpretations aim to understand how individual predictions are made. Lime and SHAP are two common examples. These can also be referred to as feature attribution methods, as they attribute a prediction to features. In other words, they explain how each model feature has changed the prediction. For example, take the SHAP waterfall plot. The SHAP values are given by the blue and red arrows. They tell us how each feature has changed the prediction when compared to the average prediction. So we can see how SHAP is used to explain individual predictions. We can also aggregate SHAP values using plots like mean SHAP and the bee swarm. With these, we can gain an understanding of how the model makes predictions as a whole. This means the line between local and global interpretations is blurred and SHAP could also be considered a global method. The second way we can classify methods is by how they are calculated. Permutation methods involve changing input data and measuring changes in model predictions. The exact way we do permutations can differ. We can randomly shuffle a feature's values 
sample from a features distribution, or from all the values in a features range. We will discuss the first approach and general limitations of permutations in a later video. This is important as permutations underlie most model agnostic methods. Another approach is to use surrogate models. Here, a black box model is first trained and used to make predictions. A surrogate model is then trained on the black box model's predictions instead of the target variable. The surrogate model must be intrinsically interpretable, so it can be interpreted directly. If we train a model on all the black box model predictions, it is known as a global surrogate model. In comparison, local surrogate models will be trained to interpret individual predictions. Lime is a good example of such a method. Many XAI methods have been developed for specific black box models. We call these non-agnostic or model specific methods. For tree-based methods, we can count the number of splits for each feature for neural networks, we have methods like pixel-wise decomposition and deep flip. The obvious downside is that these methods can only be used with algorithms they were designed for. In comparison, model agnostic methods give us flexibility of algorithm choice. They are also future-proof as they can interpret algorithms that haven't been developed yet. Other approach to interpretability is to build models that are intrinsically interpretable. Adjustments can also be made to black box models so that they become more interpretable. For example, by designing interpretable neural networks. But this approach requires us to make adjustments to well-established algorithms. We can also harm performance, that is through the adjustment itself, or by restricting model choice to those that are intrinsically interpretable. So, if you need a black box model to solve your problem, then model agnostic methods are usually the way to go. Still, they have their limitations. To summarize, there are three key limitations that you need to look out for. Firstly, they all have their own potentially incorrect assumptions. The most common is that they make the assumption of feature independence. If your model has multicollinearity, then you may get unreliable results with some model agnostic methods. Secondly, due to practical constraints, a method may not have been implemented for all modeling packages. This means the methods may be model agnostic in theory, but not in practice. Lastly, many of the charts produced by the methods are open to interpretation. This means they can be abused by forcing our prior beliefs onto their results. Really, we need to remember that you're not going to get good explanations using model agnostic methods alone. You still need to put thought into feature engineering and selection and incorporate domain knowledge throughout the model development process. Interpretability is just as much about data as it is about models and algorithms. If you do want more hands-on experience with one model agnostic method in particular, then check out this SHAP coding tutorial. Otherwise, you can find loads more XAI content in this playlist.